Let's see how well you understand basic algebra. Now, if you have a pretty good understanding of algebra, you should be able to solve this problem. Okay, so if you think you know the answer, put that into the comment section. I'm gonna walk through the complete solution in just one second. But before we get started, let me quickly tell you who I am. My name is John, and I have been teaching math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. All right, so let's go and get into the solution to this problem. Okay, so what we uh, want to do here is simplify the square root of 12. Now, what does that mean? Well, if I gave you the fraction 100 over 200, would you turn that in as your final answer, let's say on a test or a quiz? Well, hopefully uh, you would not. You would be like, no, I think I'll uh, actually just make this equal to one half, right? So you have one over 100 over 200. Well, uh, we don't want to write a value or a number in a more uh, unnecessarily in a more complicated way. We always want to express that value in its simplest form. So 100 over 200 is equivalent to 1 half. So what we're doing here is we're uh, reducing this fraction or we're simplifying this fraction. Okay. So simplification of not only numbers but variable expressions in math and algebra, it's not like an optional thing. And some of you might be saying, yeah, I'm going to do two math, man. I don't care. Uh, I did all the work, and this is my answer. And uh, I'll just turn this in to my teacher because I know my teacher will understand that this is one half and they'll give me credit for it. Well, listen, that is not uh, the way you want to do things in math. So, again, um, I guess the point I'm trying to make here is that uh, simplifying values, variable expressions, is not optional, okay? It's kind of required in order to, uh, you know, have the right answer. In other words, even if you have the right value, if it's unsimplified, it's not correct, okay? More or less, you kind of think of it in those terms. So um, one of the things that a lot of students um, have difficulty with uh, is simplifying square roots and radicals because it's not as easy to kind of see whether in fact we can actually um, simplify, uh, you know, for example, in a fraction 100 over 200, we're like, oh yes, I can simplify that. But when we're faced with something like the square root of 12, it's just not obvious whether in fact we can simplify that, but we need to try to simplify that. And the way we do this is by using this property right here. Okay, so the property that we're gonna need to understand is that we can write the square root of a number, or we can think of the square root of a number in terms of uh, the factors of that number, okay? So the, the actual formal property, or algebraically uh, kind of speaking, is the square root of A times B is equal to the square root of A times the square root of B. So if we can take a number like, let's say, 12, and break it up into two factors. So like, what are factors of 12? Well, factors of 12 is the way we can think of 12 um, as uh, two or more numbers being multiplied. So for example, six and two, six times two is 12. So six and two are factors of 12, but so are four and three. Okay, those are factors of 12. Of course, one and 12 are factors of 12 as well. So these numbers here are factors. So this is A and B. So if we can think of a number in terms of its factors, what we can do, um, the square root of a number in terms of its factors, we can separate this one big square root into two individual square roots over those factors. And this is extremely advantageous. You're going to see why here in just one second. And this is a property of square roots and radicals that you must absolutely need to understand uh, to be successful in algebra. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, do this problem here with this property in mind. So the square root of 12, I can think of it as the square root of its factors, right? So uh, 12 is equal to uh, 6 times 2. 6 times 2, of course, are uh, 6 and 2 are factors of 12. So the square root of 12 is the same thing as the square root of 6 times 2. So I can break up this one big square root into two individual square roots, so the square root of 6 times the square root of 2. Okay, so this is uh, totally legal, totally fine, and a good thing to do, but really this is not helping us so much because the square root of two and the square root of six, uh, these numbers here, 
are irrational numbers. In other words, I'm going to have to go into my calculator and get decimals. I don't really know what the square root of 6 is or the square root of 2 is. So I'm like, well, this didn't really help me out, although this is correct. So maybe we can think of the square root of 12 in terms of other factors of uh, 12. How about 4 and 3? So 4 and 3, 4 times 3 is 12. So the square root of 12 is equal to the square root of 4 times 3. So let's break up uh, the square root of 4 times 3 um, as the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. Okay, so we're just, uh, you know, approaching this using different factors. Now here, this gets very, very interesting because uh, we can see that we are going to actually be able to find out what the square root of 4 is without the aid of a calculator. Okay, so some of you might be saying, oh, I see what you're talking about, Mr. YouTube Math Man. Well, this is the key, okay? So what we're talking about here is something called perfect square factors. And of course, you have to think about them. And this particular example is quite easy. Real quick, if you want my best math instruction, you definitely got to check out my full courses. Again, you can find links to these in the description of this video, but they span basic math to advanced math and everything in between. Okay, so let's keep going with this problem. And don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. So we want to simplify this. We don't know if we can simplify this, but we certainly know that there are factors of 12. So what you want to be thinking about is something called perfect square uh, factors, perfect square factors. And perfect squares are numbers like 4, 9, 16, 25, 36. Now, why would these uh, be perfect squares? Because I can take the square root of these values right here nice and easily without this uh, aid of a calculator. Square root of 4 is 2, square root of 9 is 3, square root of 16 is 4, etc., etc., right? So you always want to be on the lookout for perfect square factors, not just any factors like 6 and 2, because 6 and 2, for example, for 12 aren't going to help us out because neither one of those numbers are perfect squares. So we'd like look at a number and be like, oh, there's a 4 in here, or uh, there's a 9 in here, or there's a 16 in here, whatever the case might be. Okay, so the square root of 12 is equal to the square root of 4 times 3. Now, this is one big square root. And by the way, too, this property works in reverse. If I had this problem right here, the square root of 4 times the square root of 3, I can put this as the square root of 4 times 3. So it goes both ways. So the square root of 4 times 3 can break this up into its two individual components. So the square root of 4 times the square root of 3, the square root of 4, of course, is 2. We're always talking about the principal square root, which is the positive version of this number. The square root of 4 is 2, not plus or minus 2. That's a separate kind of discussion. But uh, anyways, the square root of 4 is 2 times the square root of 3. So the square root of 12 uh, is equal to 2 times the square root of 3. This is the simplest way to write this number. Now, if you don't know how to do this, okay, if you're like, well, I must do too, math man. Uh, yeah, I know you want me to learn everything, but I just want to learn enough. Well, if you don't understand this, you're going to have a tough time in algebra. Matter of fact, if you um, are taking an exam and it's a multiple choice exam, you're, and if let's say you came up with the right answer, and you got like, oh, x is equal to the square root of 12. Guess what? You're not going to see that in uh, your options for a, b, and c on your test. You're going to see this right here. They're not your teacher isn't going to have the square root of 12, or the test isn't going to have it. It's going to be fully simplified. So there is a ton of reasons why you just kind of need to do this. And if you need additional help with this, well, I'm going to suggest a couple things. One, I have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel that can help you out, but I really, really would uh, kind of direct you towards like my Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 course. You can find links to those in the description below. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.